Unlike someone who got paid $33 million each year for doing nothing, Elon Musk contributes a lot to the commercialization of space travel. It could even be said that what he has done for the rocketry is worth many times more than the money he received as CEO of SpaceX. And one of his most memorable creations is the incredibly powerful Raptor rocket engine that powers the Gaint Starship rocket. Not only does it possess advanced technologies, such as a full-flow staged combustion cycle and the use of the futuristic propellant Methalox, but it has also been significantly upgraded to become more modern and powerful. Indeed, SpaceX recently blew the public away with the debut of a new masterpiece, the Raptor 3, which promises to be a turning point in Starship's development stage. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On August 3rd, SpaceX knocked the fans' socks off with the updates and image of Raptor version 3. The company also didn't forget to compare the new version to two previous ones to highlight its notable features. The performance statistics for the SpaceX Raptor engines have shown significant advancements across the different versions. The first one is thrust increase. Raptor 3 with 280 tons of force improved thrust by 50 over Raptor 2 and 95 over Raptor 1. By comparison, the closest engine to the Raptor that uses a phased combustion cycle with methane and oxygen is the BE-4 engine, which is expected to produce about 245 tons of thrust. The special version 3 surpasses the popular rocket engines, such as RS-25 with 190 tons. The RD-180 has 390 tons of thrust at sea level, but uses two combustion chambers and two nozzles reducing the thrust-to-weight ratio to 77.26, much lower than 183.6 of Raptor 3. While continuing to increase performance and manufacturability, SpaceX has managed to cut the mass of rocket engines. Following the principle, the best part is no part. Raptor 3 achieved a significant decrease in engine mass by 105 kilograms compared to Raptor 2, and up to 555 kilograms compared to Raptor 1. This suggests that the latest version could significantly reduce the dry mass of the Super Heavy booster by approximately 36 tons, which is more than a 10% reduction. As a result, Starship's payload capacity is enhanced, aligning with SpaceX's goals of improving efficiency and performance through innovative design. This potential mass saving is attributed to the elimination of the engine heat shield, which may be feasible in practice. So how did SpaceX do that? Elon Musk explained on X that if we can delete and integrate enough secondary structure, small fiddly bits, then we can locally protect, rest, and delete engine heat shields. The shift towards a design that eliminates the need for heat shields indicates a focus on minimizing parts and complexity, which could streamline production and maintenance. However, this may also complicate repairs, as the new design integrates components more closely than before, requiring more extensive work to service the engines. Elon Musk mentioned this during a part of Everyday Astronauts' Starbase tour. Clearly, with the heat shield removed, the Raptor will be exposed, so it has to have cooling. So there's integral cooling circuits throughout the, all the parts. So it looks very simple on the outside, but it's complicated on the inside. Like even all throughout the, like, the pre-burner and the yeah. gas manifolds and everything, it's, it's all... It, all that stuff you see stuck on the side disappears. And of course, the heat shield isn't the only part that's been removed. And we also eliminate a whole bunch of bolted and welded joints especially the bolted joints. You really want to get rid of those. Yeah. Above all, the Raptor version 3 is designed for rapid reuse, which means it integrates components more efficiently, potentially simplifying the engine's structure while boosting performance. With 280 tons of thrust, V3's thrust-to-weight ratio is improved compared to previous versions. The key to this lies in the pressure inside the combustion chamber. Raptor 3 chamber wall might have the highest heat flux of anything ever made, Musk said. As the pressure within the combustion chamber rises, the propellants, fuel, and oxidizer are forced to combust more efficiently. This leads to a higher temperature and pressure, which enhances the energy released during combustion. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When the exhaust gases are expelled at high velocity, they create a reaction force that pushes the rocket in the opposite direction. This enhanced thrust enables rockets to carry heavier payloads, achieve higher velocities, and undertake more ambitious space missions. A higher chamber pressure leads to a greater thrust output. 
enabling a higher thrust-to-weight ratio. This ratio is crucial as it signifies the amount of force the engine can produce in relation to its own weight. A higher thrust-to-weight ratio empowers the rocket to carry heavier payloads or achieve enhanced acceleration, thereby expanding the range of missions it can undertake. Furthermore, the importance of chamber pressure extends to the design flexibility of rocket engines. Higher pressures offer engineers the ability to achieve desired performance characteristics while maintaining compact and lightweight engine designs. This flexibility is crucial in enabling the development of advanced launch vehicles, like Starship, capable of fulfilling various mission requirements, including crewed missions, deep space exploration, and satellite deployments. SpaceX has developed Starship with the main goal of carrying both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Coming from Musk's dream of multi-planetary life, Starship is the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed, capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons fully reusable and 250 metric tons expendable. Its capabilities are very impressive, being able to carry up to 100 people on long-duration interplanetary trips. Beyond that, there are other functions such as satellite delivery, the development of a moon base, and point-to-point -point transport here on Earth. Most notably, can't help but mention a state-of-the-art technology promising to be the game-changer in the future, on-orbit refueling. Starship leverages tanker vehicles, essentially the Starship spacecraft minus the windows, to refill the Starship spacecraft in low Earth orbit prior to departing for Mars. Refilling on orbit enables the transport of up to 100 tons all the way to Mars. And if the tanker ship has high reuse capability, the primary cost is just that of the oxygen, methane, which is extremely low. Upgraded versions of the rocket, including Starship version 2 and version 3, are expected to further enhance these capabilities. However, building a settlement on Mars will not become to reality if we can't afford the expensive transportation services to get there. It's the reason why SpaceX aims to lower Starship's launch costs using economies of scale. SpaceX aims to achieve this by reusing both rocket stages, increasing payload mass to orbit, increasing launch frequency, creating a mass manufacturing pipeline, and adapting it to a wide range of space missions. The full reusability is a significant shift from traditional expendable rockets, allowing SpaceX to reduce the costs associated with building new rockets for each launch. The goal is to achieve rapid turnaround times, similar to how airlines operate, which can drastically lower the cost per launch. Starship is designed to carry a much larger payload compared to SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. With the capability to transport up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, Starship can accommodate larger and heavier payloads, making it attractive for a wide range of missions, from satellite deployments to crewed missions to the Moon and Mars. This increased capacity allows for more efficient use of resources and better economies of scale in launch operations. By establishing a fleet of Starships and Super Heavy boosters, SpaceX aims to increase the frequency of launches. A higher launch cadence spreads fixed costs over more flights, thereby reducing the average cost per launch. This strategy is expected to make space travel more accessible and frequent, akin to air travel. SpaceX plans to implement a mass manufacturing approach for building Starships and their components, similar to assembly line production. By increasing production efficiency, SpaceX can lower the costs associated with materials and labor. Estimates suggest that if SpaceX can scale up to producing multiple Starships per week, it could achieve significant cost savings, potentially reducing the cost of each Starship to around $10 million per launch. Last but not least, Starship's design allows it to be adaptable for a wide range of missions, including satellite launches, crewed lunar missions, and even space tourism. This versatility means that a single vehicle can serve multiple markets, further enhancing its economic viability and spreading costs across different types of missions. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.